AQA, A-level physics, thermal physics. This is the second video, and it's about ideal gases. And we're going to cover this stuff in this video. Let's gnash on. Okay, first of all, uh, let's talk about the properties of gases. Now, here is a, it's a fixed mass of gas. Its mass isn't going to change. We're not losing any gas. We're not gaining any. It's a fixed mass of gas. And its mass, big M, uh, we're always going to use kilograms. Okay, so mass M in kilograms. And there is a certain number of moles moles of particles in there might be atoms might be molecules but there is a number of moles little n okay if you're not sure about moles you should know from physics from gcse from chemistry gcse you should know all about moles i'll remind you that the number of moles is the mass divided by the relative atomic mass if we're talking atoms the relative atomic mass if we're talking a compound, then it's the relative molecular mass, or if we're talking molecules, the relative molecular mass. Uh, and the number of atoms, big N, the number of particles, is the number of moles times Avogadro's constant. And Avogadro's constant is the number of particles in a mole. It's a very, very big number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So, Hopefully, pretty straightforward revision there. And this question you'll be able to do in your sleep. So pen, paper, calculator, get it done. And the answer is, there you go. So it's one mole is four grams because it's helium 4.2. So the relative atomic mass is four. Uh, so 1.25 moles uh, and there you go. Now, three more very important properties of gases, the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. P, V, T, pressure, volume, temperature, okay? Now, pressure, we are always gonna measure pressure in newtons per meter squared or Pascal, and they are the same thing. A newton per meter squared is the same as a Pascal. One atmosphere, the air pressure in the room that you are in is about 100 kilopascal, okay? Volume, in our equations, volume is going to be in meters cubed, uh, although be careful, a meter cubed is 1,000 liters. Uh, in chemistry, they use these things called decimeters cubed. I don't know why, they're weird. Uh, and a liter is a thousand centimeters cubed or a, a, a thousand milliliters so a meter cubed is a million ten to the six centimeters cubed so with volume be careful with your powers of 10 but in our equations it's in meters cubed temperature now uh, we're going to use Kelvin in our equations. We're going to use Kelvin. For the moment, just remember that zero degree centigrade is 273 Kelvin. To get from centigrade to Kelvin, you add 273. To get from Kelvin to centigrade, you subtract 273. We're going to talk a lot about Kelvin very shortly. Now, the gas laws, there are three gas laws that we need to know. Uh, not in any particular order. First one is the pressure law. And the pressure law is the relationship between pressure and temperature at constant volume. You will do or be demonstrated something like this. You have a fixed volume of gas uh, in this bulb. It's called a jolly bulb. And we can heat it up in a water bath and we can measure the pressure and we can measure the temperature and we plot a graph of pressure against temperature and the graph looks like this it's a straight line so pressure against temperature is a straight line uh, temperature here in degrees centigrade and the interesting idea is what would happen if we extrapolated backwards in other words is there a temperature when the pressure of the gas is zero? 
Uh, and the interesting thing is at that temperature, then the, the particles wouldn't have any kinetic energy. They would have zero kinetic energy. So that means that must be the smallest possible temperature. Uh, it wouldn't happen because what would happen as you go backwards, then the, the, the forces between the particles would become significant. The gas would probably liquefy. But just imagine that doesn't happen and the graph goes all the way back and experimentally uh, that temperature is at about minus 273 Kelvin okay and that would be the the coldest possible temperature absolute zero this is the second gas law this is the volume law otherwise known as Charles law and it's the relationship between volume and temperature at constant pressure. Look at the apparatus. We've got some gas in a syringe and that's in a water bath. And if we heat it up, you can imagine that the gas is going to expand. So its volume will get bigger, but the pressure stays the same. So you measure the volume and the temperature. You plot a graph and our graph looks like there you go very similar to the pressure one so it's a straight line and again we get this idea if we extrapolated backwards is there a temperature where the volume of the gas would be zero okay is there a temperature where the volume is zero and again theoretically you can imagine that as the coldest possible temperature and if we do this experiment, you, you get about minus 270-ish degrees centigrade. The third gas law is pressure and volume. So we had pressure and temperature, volume and temperature. This is pressure and volume at constant temperature. And this is known as Boyle's law. OK, we have a fixed mass of gas. And with a, using a pump, we can compress this gas and we can measure the pressure. We can measure the volume. We should wait a little while in between readings to let the temperature stay the same. Yeah, to let the temperature stabilize. And we do a graph of pressure against volume. And our graph, graph of pressure against volume is a curve that suggests an inverse relationship. So we do pressure against one over volume and we get a straight line. So Boyle's law basically says that the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to its volume at constant temperature. Or we can say that PV equals a constant at constant temperature. That is Boyle's law. PV equals a constant at constant temperature. Now, real gases, gases in everyday life, real gases, the air in the room that you're in, they obey Boyle's law quite well under most conditions. OK, if the pressure isn't too big, if the temperature isn't too big, real gases obey Boyle's law very well. Now, a, a gas that obeys Boyle's law all of the time under all conditions is called an ideal gas. That is your definition of an ideal gas. It's a gas that obeys Boyle's law all of the time is an ideal gas. So temperature scales. Now a temperature scale, you, you should be very familiar with the centigrade or Celsius scale. If you're American over there, they use something called the Fahrenheit scale. Your granny might know the Fahrenheit scale. You know, it's a very, very old fashioned scale. Scientists use this thing called the Kelvin scale or the ideal gas scale. And it's a temperature scale based on an ideal gas. And what we say is we have a, a quantity that we assume is proportional to temperature. And that quantity is PV. In the ideal gas scale, we assume that PV equals a constant times temperature. OK, that is the basis of the ideal gas scale. On a gas scale, I'll talk a little bit about fixed points. I wouldn't worry too much about this. It doesn't mention it in the syllabus. 
but for a gas scale you need two fixed points. In the Celsius scale it's the temperature of melting ice and the boiling point of water and you call one of them zero and you call the other one a hundred and then you assume a linear relationship between them. Now in the Kelvin scale, in the ideal gas scale, our two fixed points are absolute zero which is the theoretical lowest temperature. An absolute zero is zero Kelvin, which is minus 273 degrees centigrade. And then the other fixed point, is, it's actually called the triple point of water. Don't worry about that. Basically, it's the melting point of ice. So that's 273 Kelvin or zero degrees centigrade. Okay, the triple point of water. So, for one mole of an ideal gas, uh, we've got PV equals RT. For N moles, it's PV equals NRT, where R is called the molar gas constant. And it's basically the constant in the equation for the ideal gas scale. Uh, you can do experiments accurately, get a value for it, 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin. It's the molar gas constant. Have a go at this sum. Um, bit of practice using that equation. Uh, the answer is in three, two, one. There you go. There's the number of moles. Now, uh, what I'm doing here is we are creating a new constant uh, and it's little k and it's called the Boltzmann constant. And what it is, it's a combination of two other constants. You've got R, which is the molar gas constant, and you've got Avogadro's, okay? So little k is R over Na. If you like, R is the gas constant for a mole. K is the gas constant for a particle. Don't worry about that. As far as we're concerned, it's another constant. And if we substitute, if we fiddle around with our equation, and with this equation, big N is the number of moles times Avogadro's, we get PV equals NKT. It, again, it's the ideal gas equation, okay, but it's just maybe a, it might be, depending on the question, more convenient to do this. PV equals big N times KT, where K is Boltzmann, the Boltzmann constant, yeah, or Boltzmann's constant. Have a go at this. One thing to note in this question is it's carbon dioxide. So I'm using the relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44. So have a go. And the answer is in three, two, one. There you go. One last thing in this video, and it's in this bit of the specification, and I don't know why it's like a bit of a sore thumb, but it's the, the work done by an expanding gas uh, at constant pressure. Uh, imagine this gas expands a little so that its volume increases by a small amount, delta V, and the pressure changes very little. And if you want to follow the derivation there, it's just basically work is force times distance. Uh, and pressure is force over area. Uh, we get this expression here. The work done by an expanding gas at constant pressure is W equals P delta V. If you do the engineering option, by the way, we do a lot more on this in the engineering option. But now W equals P delta V. Remember P is constant in that equation.